How's it going, Grey Boys? It is rivalry week here in the eighth week of our initial season with Eastern Michigan. We're playing Western Michigan. It's a big rivalry for us as we will head to Kalamazoo to play the Broncos. And Western Michigan has 14 prospects visiting for this game, which is absolutely absurd. They must think that they're going to win. They must be very confident. And this is the first game in a long time that we are favored to win. Uh, we are the higher overall team. Statistically, we're better in everything, but our turnover differential and our rust offense, Western Michigan is sitting just at two and three. Uh, they had a decently close loss to Michigan State, but then got shut out by the number seven team in Penn State. They beat Marshall in Buffalo. Uh, the Marshall game, a close one, although it's a one and four Marshall team. And Buffalo is 0-5, and, and then they just lost to Kent State. So everything looks like it should be a win for us, but obviously with the way that I've been playing recently, all my bad passing, you just never know. While they have 14 recruits visiting, we will have a few recruits of our own to set up visits for, but uh, I think that we're honestly looking really good. I have added nine guys onto the board this week. They're all pretty much low-lock cheese. There might be a couple of guys that just haven't been offered scholarships, but we're going to take a look at them. And if we could pull in one or two of these guys as we find the gem athlete, Josh Clifford, uh, he would make a really good running back, maybe a good wide receiver, defensive back. Uh, that's really good. Mark Morris, even at 69 overall, is really good for us. But if we could just pick up a couple of these guys that we're adding onto the board late, that would be really, really big for our recruiting class. So I'm not seeing anybody that's terrible enough to come off the board. And with that, we can just start to give points to some of these guys. Now, obviously, the guys that we added this week, we won't. But guys like Clinton Whitfield, 72 overall defensive tackle. A low lock cheese kind of guy where he's only 16% locked. And we're going to be in the lead with him very shortly. And actually, let's go ahead and offer some scholarships this week. I meant to do this previously, but I forgot. So we have the points this week. Let's give scholarships to all these guys that were in front of. I don't care how low their overall is. Uh, if we're in the lead with them, we're going to try to pick them up because we got to try to sign a full class of recruits this season. And that leaves all but two guys uh, without their scholarship offers that we're in the lead with. And then we have nobody ready for a visit. Oh, I thought we had some that we needed to schedule, but I guess I'm wrong there. Let's take a quick look at our top classes. I like to do this periodically throughout the season just to see who's kind of dominating and it's texas uh three and one are the longhorns this season number 10 in the country nine guys signed already three five stars and three four stars and then notre dame at uh, two five stars and three four stars with 10 prospects sign that's pretty incredible and then you've got boston college with 13 guys already signed here uh three one stars three two stars so uh they're going for the juco route maybe seven three stars our top 25 saw quite a bit of chaos last week as so many top 10 teams lost. Uh, and this week, it's going to be mostly upsets if we see anything. We don't have a whole lot of ranked stuff. Nebraska plays Purdue and Texas A&M will play Auburn. Other than that, it's all unranked matchups for these guys. So maybe a little bit of a breather as uh, <laughs> they kind of got knocked around last week. Now, we struggled against Bowling Green in that last game, so we'll hope for the best here. Uh, Western Michigan is 75 overall. They've got the 74 offense and a 76 defense. So honestly, very similar to matchup as to what Bowling Green was, where we have the slight edge on offense and we're tied on defense. Uh, and again, being on the road could be a little bit interesting. We don't have great, I don't know. We're going to go green pants, I think, with the alternates there. And just hope for the best. Um, I'm thinking we'll just go standard homes for you here for Western Michigan. Again, neither of our teams updated yet. And coming in, we have a very mediocre offense. I would almost say bad. We pass the ball surprisingly well, but it's honestly also our downfall because of how many interceptions I've been throwing. Uh, and we don't run the ball well, except we have a really good running back. So I just need to really stick to the run more. We'll try to do that a little bit this game. Western Michigan's offense is just bad. They can run the ball better than us, but they're terrible everywhere else. And then uh, defensively, we have been dominating, and they haven't really done a whole lot. Again, 14 prospects visiting for Western Michigan, so we'll try and shut that down. Uh, their top players, 
high to mid 80s. That's not terrible. We're going to hope that Serge Mitchell can stay healthy today. That'll help us in the passing game. But otherwise, we got to really lean on Jesse Wagner here. He's already rushed for 666 yards this season. Uh, but we've only gotten him two touchdowns. So we need to allow him to find the end zone a little bit more. So here we are in Kalamazoo at Waldo Stadium for a big rivalry game. Eastern versus Western. What can we do? Tails never fails except for a rivalry game, I guess. And it looks like we're going to be starting with the football on this uh, beautiful fall day. Big game skill activated for Western Michigan as they will kick it off and will take the touchback. And you guys got to help keep me accountable. Call me out when I start to make these stupid decisions where, like, I come out and pass the ball in dumb spots. I almost did it on first down. Instead, we're going to hand it to Jesse Wagner and just let him go to work up the middle. And I don't know why I would do anything else. Five yards on first down there. Going to continue to feed him as we'll go with the draw on second and five. And that's going to work for nothing. But, you know, we gave him a different look. And to be fair, draw plays don't often work in this game anyways. It was a risk calling it to begin with. Just didn't work out that time. Third and five. We're going with the slip screen, which is always risky in this game. But Jesse has some blockers. And he's not going to get the first down. Oh, that's just bad running for me. That should have been easily a first down. Coach doesn't want us to go for it, though, so we're just going to punt it away. Not a good punt either, and Western Michigan will get a takeover. Third and five quickly for the Broncos, and it's a touchdown? Oh, my gosh. Just like that, a three-play, 68-yard touchdown drive for Western Michigan as our rivals will take the lead very early in this game. Our other rivals, Central Michigan, having a great start to the season. They're 5-1 and one as they beat Bowling Green. It's first and 10 from the 19. We're going read option on first down. Ed Bird broken. We've seen this before. That is a real shame. We can't trust the read option today. So we're going to lose four yards there. Second in a very long ways to go. Got to give it to Jesse again. We'll hand it off, hoping for some blocks. There's not a whole lot there, and he's just going to get near the original line of scrimmage. Now, this is a tough spot for a third down. Third and 11 inside our own 20. We're going to have to go to the air. I'm looking for Serge Mitchell. His man's pressed up on him. He is in a tough spot over the middle, though. <sighs> Late or early, depending on how you see that one throwing that ball. It's incomplete. Lucky that that one wasn't picked off. I saw it late. I could have thrown it right as he made the cut. He was wide open. And if I could have waited a little bit longer, we would have been good. A good return on the punt. And Western Michigan off to the races again. Fourth and one, though. Dropped pass. And we get the touchback. So the defense holds there after a bad first drive. And we'll get the chance to go to work again on offense. Wagner getting a good block on the toss play. Gets eight yards. Maybe we can get a little momentum on this drive. And we're going to mix in a play action here. Try to get Ed Bird a, an opportunity to complete a good pass. I like Serge Mitchell's route. And Serge is going to be wide open. I threw that one late. But he came down with it. What an incredible catch. That defensive back absolutely stuck on him. But he somehow goes up and makes the grab anyways. Fantastic effort from him. Moving the chains. Wagner only a yard on that first down. And we'll get Jerome Simmons in for his first touch of the game. See what we can do. Handing it off up the middle. Jerome just gets a couple. It's another third long. This could be really controversial play calling, but I'm going back to the slip screen and we'll see if it can work. Uh, otherwise, we're looking maybe at checking it down to a, a, uh, an actual route on this one. They're covering it very well, throwing it late. Wagner needs to get the speed going. <laughs> there goes the juke. Gets him across the 40. Oh, he's the entire reason we got that. Risky play call. Just happens to work out, but... It's not like uh, coaching was the reason we got the first down there. That's 45 seconds left in this first quarter. We'll give the ball back to Jerome as he comes in. And we're going to have Jerome just try to truck through people when he gets the chance. He doesn't quite have that agility, but he does have a decent amount of speed. So just let him run at people when he gets some open space and hope that he can break the tackle. Nine yards on that first down. We'll give it to him again. And he's got some blockers and he's got the first down as well. Try to give it to Wagner here on what will be the final play of the first quarter. Out towards the edge, trying to follow the blockers. Just not quite there enough. Wagner still manages to get three yards, but 
Eh, you would have liked a little bit more there. So at the end of one, a uh, shocking score, maybe. Maybe not. We didn't play all that well at the start of the uh, first quarter here. 7 nothing for our rivals after a big 64-yard touchdown for them. Unfortunately for the Broncos, we might be able to get this lead eliminated really quickly. Wagner coming in on the counter. Has a little bit of blocking, which he follows beautifully. Finds the gap that just barely existed, and that's a first down. So far, a nine-play, 64-yard drive as we'll look towards the end zone. I'm thinking that Wilson's going to be open. Maybe we have to check down on this play action, or we just give it to Wagner. He's doing it all so far for us. Why not continue to let him pick up yards as time it's nine through the air? I had really thought about uh, throwing it a risky route there, but I decided against it. I'm trying to learn. And it put us in a good spot inside the three, giving it to Jerome Simmons up the middle, and he's in for the touchdown. So we have tied this game up. Uh, plenty of time to work with, too, in this second quarter. So what can Western Michigan do? Uh, fumble on the kick return recovered by us. So just like that, the lead is gone for Western Michigan, and they have a chance of completely losing the tie here as they muff or fumble on the kickoff return, and it gives us a beautiful chance here. Pitch out to Wagner, gets a couple of yards. And to me, this seems like a decent spot to try to get the pass. Inside the red zone, just like that. We'll step back, looking to throw. That's a risky one, but it's two Surge Mitchell. He can't hold on, though. And it's third and long. Very tempted to do some AI play calling and go with the slip screen again. But I've decided against it for now. And we'll go play action on third and eight. Again, looking for Wilson. The tight end is open, and he's caught it in the corner of the end zone. 17 yards, and we're going to take the lead just like that. That was a quick two scores thanks to our special teams forcing and recovering that fumble. Maybe they can do it again on the kickoff. Eh, just take the touchback wisely this time. Big 10-yard penalty on first down. Drops them back, and this is going to be a tough one. Second and 16, just like that for the Broncos. Another 10-yard penalty. Must have been another holding. Third and 21. You guys have mentioned that you enjoy seeing the defense get a play a little bit, so... Uh, and big plays or, you know, if they're about to score, we'll we'll switch on and we'll watch them. And hey, look at that. The AI play calling in full effect as they go with the slip screen on third and a mile. And the defense gets the stop. So the punt gets returned to the 45, which means, again, we have good field position. We'll try to extend the lead here, handing it off on first down, giving it to Jesse, cutting it up the middle. And Jesse Wagner off to the races gets run into by, uh, it might have been Serge Mitchell there, but... 23 yards nonetheless, a great cut to find the space. Again, we are ranking as one of the worst teams in the country for running the ball yardage-wise per game, but we do a phenomenal job in getting those yards. We would probably be middle of the road, a couple hundred yards a game if I just ran more, which we're trying this game. It's working so well. Simmons comes in on the counter. He's got a good lead block, drops the shoulder, takes the contact, but can only get three yards. Our fifth third down conversion of this game so far. We'll have to step back looking to throw it. Let's put Simmons on the wheel route and see if anybody can come open. I'm looking over the middle. Got to go check down. Giving it to Serge Mitchell. He picks up a nice block from Jerome there. And that's enough to spring him free for the first down. Nearing the two-minute mark in this half. We don't want to give them too much time to score, but... Uh, we could potentially get another drive ourselves if they get the stop, so I'm not going to be burning the clock just yet. Second and four. Wagner still in in the backfield, but we'll look to the air on this one. They're bringing a lot of pressure. I'm going to dump it off to Jesse, and he's got a lot of space. Does he have the speed to get to the corner? He does, and he gets into the end zone through the contact. Our third touchdown of this second quarter. This is absolutely phenomenal. So we're going to take a two-touchdown lead there. So the extra point was good. The kick return goes out to about the 22. Incomplete pass on first down. A 21-yard pass on second down as they're moving the ball. Thrown away second and 10 near midfield. Big penalty again. This Western Michigan offense not very disciplined. And it's going to be third and 20 with a minute on the clock. So we're going to hop in here and watch to see if the defense can get the stop. Hopefully our coach will take the timeout if they do. If the clock is running because we have a chance to maybe score again. That's a big pass. Tackled at the line, but it's going to be enough for the first down as Western Michigan crosses the 50 there. This sim was a little bit weird, but 
incomplete pass and then a two yard pass sets them up with a third and eight. They had to take their second timeout and they'll be looking to convert over the middle wide open. It's a big catch inside the 30 now. And I think they're gonna be in the hurry up. 41 seconds, they gotta save that timeout. So what can they do here? Stepping to the line, we know they're gonna be passing. Can the defense slow them down? Maybe a stop. Quarterback throwing it out into the out route, kinda in the flat, makes a man miss. Stiff arm cheese across the five and out of bounds. That's disappointing. So 32 seconds, first and goal for the Broncos. Can they make it a touchdown game heading into the locker room? A big hit there. He just glitched forward and got a free three yards. Clock is going to be moving, but they are at the two-yard line. We'll see them. Looks like they're going to snap it and go to the air. Quarterback looking for it. Tosses it out. Nothing doing. It's uh, third and goal. Clock's moving. I don't understand why our coach isn't taking the timeout. They might have to spike the ball. This is probably, no, this is going to be the last play of the half, three, two, one. Will they get it off in time? They do, so clock expires on this play. Throwing it, he catches it, but he's short of the line to gain, and the defense gets the stop and holds. So we will get to go into the locker rooms with our 14-point advantage here in this rivalry game. Decent half for us. The first quarter a little bit disappointing, but that second quarter we absolutely just turned on the Jets. A big turnover created by the special teams, and then the offense... Kicking it into gear, some good passes, some smart passes, most importantly, and then, of course, some good running alongside that. Uh, I, I, if we can hold on to the ball, we can win this game. So the kickoff to start the third quarter is just going to be a touchback, and we'll see what these guys can do as the first drive for Western Michigan was fantastic, but then since then they've struggled. Terrell with another good pass puts him across midfield. Second and four, it's... A one-yard penalty against the defense. I'm not really sure how that works. Uh, but it's second and eight now. As they must have gotten a first down. I'm very confused. Third and eight pass dropped. And on their eighth third down attempt of the night, we'll see if Western Michigan can do it again. They've been passing pretty well. This time it's a handoff up the middle. And <laughs> our run defense says absolutely no to that. Stuffs them behind the line. And we'll force them to punt this ball away. And we'll just take that for a touchback. Going to get a little bit risky here. Ed Bird screwed up on a read option earlier in this game. I feel like he might do it again here as that one is going to be handed off to Jesse Wagner who gets hit behind the line and dropped for a loss of two. Good defense there. We only have 160 total yards of offense, but we have 21 points. So scoring efficiently. So we'll hand it off again here, getting the block that we need. Wagner makes a guy miss. Oh my gosh, a beautiful spin move sets us up with a third and three. Every game it feels like Wagner has just a chance to break one free and he just doesn't quite get there. So we'll expect it to come eventually as Simmons comes in and makes some nice moves for 11 yards, converting and giving us another first down. We really do have two pretty special backs. They're both really solid. I've always been impressed with them. And we're having a great game so far today. We'll throw the quick curl to Nixon. He's going to take a big shot, but it's enough to get us to midfield. Ed Bird on a day where I'm not throwing ridiculous deep passes all the time is 8 of 10 with a couple of touchdowns. So absolutely fantastic there. Wagner fighting through the contact for a couple of yards on that first down. And Jesse is averaging 5 yards per carry so far today. Simmons is kind of similar. He's maybe a little bit lower, but having a good game. Great cutback, and yeah, there's another 11-yard carry. Uh, we've already rushed for over 100 yards. He's averaging six. So we're just absolutely moving with ease running the football today. This could be a little bit risky. We're going with the pitch. Got to get rid of it early. Simmons trying to follow the blockers, and that linebacker just barely doesn't get picked up. That could have been absolutely huge. Second and three on what I thought could have been an absolutely massive game step back Mitchell comes in motion we're gonna just throw it to surge over the middle and just move the chains get the first down we don't need the home run there Ed now over a hundred yards passing on the day as this third quarter is going really quick this is a clock burning drive that we're on right now as Wagner has another really good cut unfortunately runs in the lineman but still got four yards let's just give it to Simmons Simmons getting a lot of running here in the third quarter and it's working well, trying to keep these guys both fully high, or as high as we can on the stamina. So I've changed our sub in and out for them just so that we see them both 
and Robinson now, the third stringer, will come in on a big third and two, his first carry of the game. He's going to get the blocking. He's going to fight, and he just doesn't get the spot. Fourth and inches. We'll see if Coach allows us to go for this. And I'm honestly a little bit surprised. Not going to elect to take the field goal. It's going to be Simmons coming back in on a very crucial play. Up the middle, we're going to run it. Blocking is fantastic. That was never in doubt. And we move the chains. Good decision from the coach that time. Robinson will come back in as we're going to go play action on this first down. And, oh, I don't like anything. Edward running for his life. Lucky that we don't fumble that and we're sacked for five yards. Probably should have thrown that one away, but I thought maybe he could get away for a couple. It unfortunately doesn't work that time, though. And this is probably going to be the final play of the third quarter as Jesse Wagner comes back in. We've got him on the wheel route. Mitchell on the curl. I'm going to throw it to Serge. He's open. He holds on through the contact, and it's a third and one as the clock is going to expire on the third quarter. So into the fourth we go, up two touchdowns. Looking to score another, but even if we just have to settle for a field goal, our defense has done a phenomenal job so far today. Uh, just got to keep running the football. Hope that Jesse and Jerome can have enough stamina to finish out the game and got to just not throw a pick. This has been, so far, what I would consider a great rivalry game for us. Remember, they have 14 players, 14 recruits in attendance for this game. Uh, they thought they were cheeky scheduling them against the rival as Jesse... Falls forward and gets that first and goal there. But this visit could backfire. If any of those guys are guys that we're interested in, they're going to see us come out and play, and maybe they want to play for us. Ed Bird, spin move. He, oh, my gosh. He screwed up the read option. He did that glitch where he just stands there, but uh, somehow I spin him free. <laughs> the double spin move, and he gets into the end zone for the rushing touchdown. The extra point is good, and a decent kick return for them out to the 25. So what can Western Michigan do to answer? Not a lot of time left in the game, and they're going to screw it up, apparently. It must have been a quick turnover by the defense, because we have the ball in opponent's territory here, giving it to Jesse Wagner on the counter. We're just going to let him do his thing, continue to run this football as he's marching towards 100 yards on the day. It has been absolutely fantastic. I want to throw here. Might not be the smartest decision, but we're going to go for it anyways. Go to our check down. Give it to Wilson. Let the tight end fight forward for that first down. That's a good seven yards. We have certainly dialed back the passing, but Ed Bird, 11 of 13. Just shows that when I'm not going for home run balls, I can make some good decisions passing the football. It just doesn't happen every time. Jesse can't fight through all those Broncos. And the herd brings him down for uh, no gain. Big second and 10. We're going to go play action to see what we can do. And over the middle. This is a risky throw. Nixon. Oh, my gosh. Can't come down with that. I used him out of the way. That is entirely my fault. This could be a big return. Simmons ends up being the one to make the stop. And just as I'm saying, we need to hold on to the ball. And then I'm making good de passing decisions. I throw up a stupid one there and then usered the receiver out of the way. So it was just an easy catch for the defense there. That's a shame. Really mars uh, what was a, a good passing game for me too. Big pass for them on first down as well. Back-to-back uh, -back first downs, in fact. And Western Michigan, well, never mind. That's our third turnover created because the defense just got another stop. Which means we can continue to burn the clock and it's uh, no harm, no foul at the end of the day. The worst part about that pick is just that Edwards having such a good game. Uh, he only had two incompletions. That was only his third of the game. And no picks, a couple of touchdowns. He's really efficient. And then I come in and screw it up. So third and one inside three minutes. If we get this first down, we're going to burn the clock. Giving it to Jerome on the counter. Got to go up the middle. He's going to fight for it, but it's not enough. Just gets back to the line of scrimmage. Fourth one. I expect that we'll punt this one away. And that's exactly what Coach has decided. Give it back to Western Michigan. They get a good first down. Drop pass. And it's third and ten. And we're going to hop in on board with them. We do now have a couple more total yards of offense than them as they are 50% on the day from third down. Quarterback again steps back to pass all the time. The world is intercepted. That's going to be a pick six. Catching it on the run. The 20, the 10, the 5, and tackled into the end zone. Our fourth turnover 
created of the day. Terrell, his third interception. The defense scores. Extra point is good. And just like that, 35-7 to in the rivalry game. That is absolutely fantastic. Another third and one. We'll see what Western Michigan can do with just a minute and a half on the clock. Maybe we can create another turnover. They're just going to hand this one off. Smart decision. And oh my gosh, the stiff arm cheese is strong. There's BJ Fraser goes for 15 yards. In the hurry up with the clock stopped. Western Michigan just trying to save face at this point. Looking to make uh, the game a little bit closer uh, than it really was. Clock is moving now as we move inside a minute. And for the recruits, the 14 recruits that they bought, brought to this game seems like an absolute mistake. Bad spot, I think, there. It's third and inches as Western Michigan takes their first time out. And I'm honestly going to expect them to go to the air. You would think a handoff to get the first down would be smart, but I just feel like they're going to pass it. And no, I'm completely wrong. A great throw. We got lucky that that tackle was as good as it was as they take their second time out. Really hoping that the defense can get a stop here. I want to see another turnover. We have four on the day. I want to see five. Pressure coming as the quarterback throws it. Man's wide open on the sideline. It's a 19-yard reception inside the 15. It's a beautiful round. This quarterback's not having a good game. 16 of 28. Again, three interceptions to one touchdown, but it's working so far on this drive as they'll hand it off, get a solid chunk of yards, but they can't afford to take the timeout. So we'll see them jump back into the hurry up here. Second and five, 34 seconds on the clock. Can the defense keep them under 10 points? Keep them in single digits? I'm not so sure. That's a good handoff up the middle, but it only ends up getting a yard at the end of it. So third and four, a big chance here for the defense to get this up and get off the field as the clock continues to tick down inside 15 seconds. This could be the final play of the game. We'll see what they elect to do on fourth down. Quarterback all the time in the world to throw. He throws it over the middle, and it is incomplete. Batted around a couple of times. I thought a chance for the pick, but just drops to the turf. And on fourth and four, it looks like they're going to go for it. They want the touchdown. They don't want to just go out and kick the field goal for the free points. Quarterback steps back. I think I see someone in the corner of the end zone. What a catch. Beautiful throw. Dan Landry didn't need to be that close to the sideline. But it works as well as it could have, I guess. Good throw from the QB. And the defense can't hold there. Back corner of the end zone is number seven. Penn State gets upset by Rutgers. Uh, so we do see a little bit of chaos in our top 25. As I will expect this kickoff to probably be the final play of the game. They're going onside. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to get a run one play on offense. Now, I could come out in the victory formation, take the 10 XP and be good, but this is a rivalry game. So we got to come out and throw one deep, right? As long as they're wide open, I'm going to let it go. And that looks like it's not at all wide open. Ball's overthrown. Thankfully, it falls harmlessly to the turf. Terrible throw. Bennett was never going to get there. But at the end of the day, we get the win. It's a dominating win over our rivals on the road. Beautiful pick six that we got to witness, which was nice, as the defense created three turnovers. The special teams created another. And we win it 35-14. to 14. What a game that ends up being. We should have beat them in the turnover battle for nothing, except for the stupid, stupid pick that I threw. Uh, what a game for us, though. 143 rushing yards. Again, we're not rushing a crazy amount. Uh, part of that does come down to the fact that we're on six-minute quarters, but we're very efficient in our running game. Only passed for 121 today, but dominated time to possession with 15 minutes and 43 seconds. We held them to 79 on the ground, but gave up 260 through the air as their quarterback was throwing like crazy. The 21 points in the second quarter and the 14 in the fourth is enough to get a very big win. Almost held them to single digits as Derek Alexander is their offensive player of the game. And we gave Joe Singletary the defensive one with the interception. But Jesse Wagner, 18 carries for 82 yards and four receptions for 45 yards with a touchdown there. And then Terrence Van, the free safety, had the forced fumble and the fumble recovery on the kickoff. That really jump-started uh, our comeback and in, put it into a, a chance for us to take the lead. So we come out with the win 5-2. One win away from bowl eligibility here. Uh, our first season with Eastern. Let's go ahead and advance towards next week. We'll have to play another team from Ohio as Toledo will come visit. 
And while it's not the most exciting news, we get a 64 overall center to commit, but Toledo has actually picked up one of the left ends that we were looking at. However, he was only 63 overall. And this could be actually a difficult game. I didn't realize Toledo is six and one and favored to win, even though once again, we are the higher overall team. Looks like they have a pretty explosive offense. How about our top 25? We know that Rutgers had a big upset over Penn State. Did anything else crazy happen last week? It looks like a lot of wins. Is it really just Penn State? Penn State, Purdue, Stanford, Texas A&M, uh, Tennessee, and Temple are the teams that lose. So not a whole lot of chaos. Um, Purdue, Nebraska was a ranked matchup, and Texas A&M, Auburn was a ranked matchup. Those were the only two ranked matchups, so we were guaranteed at least two teams. Uh, Stanford got upset by Akron, 28-21, so maybe uh, the team that we lost to isn't as bad as we had thought. Golston does manage to get another win. They beat Kentucky, so they stay uh, just at that two losses, and we'll see if they're able to bounce back into that top 10. And we see a little bit of movement in the Heisman watch, but right now it seems like it's Brandon Browns to lose. Uh, 26 carries for 154 yards and three touchdowns in the loss, the overtime loss against South Carolina. There's a lot of other guys playing, but I don't see anything super crazy. This quarterback had a decent game. 364 passing yards for three touchdowns uh, but everybody else is getting a similar amount of rushing yards but he's already over a thousand on the season which is really impressive uh he's just had a pretty solid career unfortunately that's gonna have to do it for this episode if you enjoyed this one please feel free to hit the like button subscribe if you haven't already and you want to be notified when new videos come out and then you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also a link to my Twitter where if you follow us, uh, when we hit 200 followers there, we're going to be doing a giveaway for an exclusive Goonmaster t-shirt. Uh, I own the only other one in existence. After you followed me on Twitter, you can continue down the list of links. We've got one for our community Discord and another for the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the gray boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.